I'm Anna Hellman, and today I want to share with you some heat embossing techniques. Uh, heat embossing is such a beautiful way to add a special touch to your projects, and you can use it as is or add some fun techniques and step it up even a little bit more. Let's take a look. If you happen to be new to heat embossing, I will share the basics here as we go through this first technique. For the rest of them, I will be shortening it a little bit and not showing you all the steps. So the first one I wanna show you is how to emboss with multiple colors of embossing powder. Is this something you've ever thought about? I know for a lot of us, probably not, but I wanna show you what kind of an effect you can create if you do. So for this technique, you could do this on regular cardstock, but I, I'm gonna be using this lovely floral stamp set for my samples. It's called Fragrant, Fragrant Flowers. It's coming January 5th and it coordinates with this designer paper pack that you can actually get free during celebration, which is all during January and February. Uh, with a $50 order, you could get this paper pack free. So because these two coordinate, I thought it was a really neat, a, a really neat way that I could show this technique. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to stamp, stamp this with Versamark. So I'll ink it up first. I wanna get it inked up really good. And before you stamp, I highly encourage you to use an embossing buddy, which is going to remove any static or any moisture from your paper. Now, static and moisture can attract extra embossing powder to places you don't want it to stick. And if possible, you want to avoid that. So I got that inked up really well. I'm gonna give this a really good press. And since it's in my Stamparatus, if I want to, I could actually stamp this a second time. But I think I am going to try it here and see what happens. So here's what I'm gonna to do to get the, to use the multiple colors of embossing powder. I have three colors here. I have gold, silver, and copper. And I'm going to sprinkle them over just in small sections. I'm actually gonna use my fingers to do this because I don't want that paste to, or the powder, to stick to all of the ink. I only want it in certain places because I want these different colors to blend together. Now, I am, in the spots I'm placing it, I am going to sprinkle it fairly heavily. There are some spots I'm going to sprinkle it a little bit less heavily so that maybe the colors will blend together in those areas. And then I'm going to flip this over. And if you don't want the colors to be streaky where they like fall down your paper as you're flipping, you may wanna do this pretty quickly. Now, I don't think that's going to cause too many issues as I do this. So I'll flip that, I'll shake it off and pour this back into my container and move on to my next color. So let's do, that was the gold, let's do some copper next. And we'll do basically the same thing. I will mention that if you are concerned about the colors mixing, so for example, when I shake off the extra copper that I have here, it is possible that some little pieces of the gold powder are going to come with it. If you're concerned about that, you wanna make sure you give your paper a really good flick on the back side between colors to make sure that any loose powder has come loose. So here, I'll show you right now. I like to do this either over the trash can or over my coffee filter because loose pieces will definitely come off when you do this. So I've got the gold and the copper done. And now last but not least, let's do the silver. And for since I've already covered quite a few spots, I'm actually just gonna pour this over because I want this to fill in any spots that haven't been covered yet. Okay, I'm going to heat set this. I will speed this up for you so you don't have to watch the whole time and then we'll take a look at the finished product. So here we can see the finished sample. Can you see the spots where 
you see mostly the silver. Uh, I feel like the gold and the copper have kind of blended together, but the silver does still stand out. But isn't that beautiful? Now, you could, like I said, you could do this on regular cardstock and then color it in with a technique I'll show you here in a few minutes. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to use this. You do not have to have coordinating designer paper and a stamp to use it, but I thought this was just a really neat way to do it. And didn't it change the look of this paper? Uh, this has the black in between the petals and it really brightened it up. Uh, I just love that. So stick around until the end and I'll show you some finished card samples with these, with, with these samples. Okay, for my second one, I have already embossed the word thanks. Now here is the stamp set I'm using and it does have a coordinating die set. You'll see at the end, I will use some of these dies on my finished cards. So I stamped the word thanks and I embossed it with clear embossing powder. I did this on shimmery white cardstock. You don't have to use shimmery white cardstock. You can use regular cardstock or regular white or another color. But I chose to use the shimmery white because I find that it really helps the colors to blend and I have more time to move the colors around before it actually soaks into that paper. So I get a better, better blend that way. I'm using Blackberry Bliss ink and I like to pull some ink off of it onto a block just like this. This is my largest water painter brush. I'll be using another one here in a second. These come in a set. It's a really neat tool. And I squeeze this, it has water in the barrel here. I squeezed it till some of the water came out on the block. And now I'm going to mix. So I can mix as much or as little of that color in as I want, uh, depending on how light or how dark I want this to be. Now, just to hold this in place and keep my fingers out of the way, I'll grab my take your pick tool. And if, if you're not sure about this, I encourage you to start with a lot of water and not a lot of color. You can always go back and add more color as you want to, if it's not as dark as you hoped. Okay. So as you can see, I just brushed right over that because this is the shimmery white cardstock. It gave me some time to make that color and make the water flow without it soaking in right away. And we are getting, going to get a really cool technique as this dries. Now, I think just for fun, I'm going to mix a little bit more but I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this darker here and add in a few darker places. Just go back over, and we'll get some darker spots with that. Now, something I will need to do as this dries is go over the embossed part with a tissue or a paper towel and soak the color off of the word thanks, and it will come off really easily. Okay, so that is technique number two and you'll be seeing how this comes together on a card here in a few minutes now for my third one i have already embossed this same large flower with gold embossing powder and i wanted to show you how we can color this in using one of the smaller water painters so this is actually my medium size one and I'll bring in some Calypso Coral ink and some Mossy Meadow. And I'll grab two acrylic blocks here. I'll pick up some of the ink the same way I did on that last one. And we will start painting. I have a really neat example of this technique that I'll show you here in a second that I did to look very vintage or aged. Uh, here not too long ago, I did a vintage tutorial to show you different ways to take your projects and make them look aged. I think it's a really neat effect that adds a lot of character to projects. And I'll show you one of these here in just a second, like I said, that is very aged but i'm doing this pretty quickly i wanted to show you that this can be pretty carefree you don't have to take a lot of time what i love about watercolor 
is even if you go outside the lines a little bit, it's really not a big deal because the look of it is very relaxed and it doesn't really look like you messed up if it goes outside the lines. It just looks like it's part of it. Let's add some green on the leaves. Now the darker you mix your color, the more you may want to be careful when you apply it because those darker colors do stand out a little bit uh, as my green. See, when I started, it was a little bit darker and as I use up some of that color, it's getting lighter. And I'm not gonna worry so much about staying inside the lines, okay? I'm debating whether to do, I'll go ahead and fill in a little bit right here. These are just adorable little buds. And I'll add a little bit of that coral color in the center of those buds. This is how I clean out my brush. As you can see, I just squeeze and water is coming out and the ink color clears out of that. Then I can come back and pick up another color and they won't mix together. Okay, so that's a really fun technique. Now, if you really like to blend and shade, you can come back in and add some darker colors, different places make it look a little bit more realistic. I love blending. Uh, I love that when you add those deeper colors, it really helps it look more realistic. Give it a little more pop, but you do not have to do this. You can keep it really simple. So that's technique number three. I can't wait to see that on a finished card here in a couple of minutes. Now we are going to move on to the fourth one. This is called the Joseph's Coat Technique. And I've shared this several times in other videos, but it's always fun to see new examples of how you can use the same technique and get a different effect. So what I have here, I have a piece of the same designer paper from that paper pack I mentioned. It is called Favored Flowers. I've links to all these products in the video description below. If you're interested, several of them are not available until January 5th, but there's something fun to look forward to. So what I did, I stamped that small flower stamp repeatedly across this piece of designer paper. I stamped it with first mark, I embossed it with clear embossing powder. And now I am going to come in with my Blackberry Bliss ink and my blending brush. This is a tool that I just absolutely love. I wanna get some of the extra off on my scrap paper before I start. And then I'm going to start blending in from the outside. And I wanna do this fairly gently to be able to get even color as I go. But what you're going to notice is those flowers that I stamped and I embossed they were really hard to see when we started. They get easier and easier to see as I keep blending. So I'll do this entire piece and I think I may actually add some color variation in as well. I could do this so that the background color, the Blackberry Bliss is the same across the entire piece or uh, what I'm thinking might be fun is if I have some variation, if I make it kind of like an ombre effect and have a darker area and a lighter area. So right now I already have a little bit of darker going on at this one end. So let's add to that a little bit. We'll start down here and Try to make that fairly dark and as I move up it will get a little bit lighter. So blending is something you, you can blend away all day if you want or you can call it quits anytime. So now what I need to do is wipe off that embossed area and show you what it looks like when we clean that ankle. Like I said, a tissue or a paper towel works for this. Sometimes I actually use a, a baby wipe that's not very wet, just kind of a 
one of my older ones that has dried out a little bit in the pack. And as I do this, it is taking that extra ink off of the embossed areas. Now it is still going to be that fresh freesia color, that lavender, because that is what was underneath. What's fun about this technique is you can get so many different results depending on what is underneath your embossing and then the color or colors you blend in between. So if you have multiple colors, like a multicolor designer paper on the bottom, then you'll see that multicolor through, which is a really neat effect. And since I'm doing this here, I grabbed the word thanks that I said I needed to clean off and we'll clean that one off too. So there you can see it goes back to the white, which is what was underneath that clear embossing. Okay, we have one more technique and this is a really neat one. I think, I know I'm, I'm probably biased, but I just love these techniques. I think there's some really, really neat ones that you can do a lot with. So I'm bringing my apparatus back in, one of the best tools ever. I will include links to a tutorial on this tool as well as my water painters in the video description below. And what I'm going to do for this one is we are going to stamp this onto another piece of that designer paper. So I'll put my paper up here in the corner. I will line this up where I want it. Let's attach that to the plate. You will notice I often do not use my magnet when I'm, I could use my magnet to hold the paper in place, but for whatever reason, a lot of times I just don't. Here's what we are going to do. And this is another technique I have shared several times, but it's a really neat one. And it's fun to combine with the embossing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use those same two colors of ink I had a few minutes ago, Calypso Coral and Mossy Meadow. I am going to use sponge daubers and I'm going to apply the ink just in select areas. So for the Calypso Coral, I'll apply it over the flowers and then I'll add a little bit over the buds as well. So I'm applying this fairly light and I'm going to leave myself the option of coming back in and adding more on a second or a third stamping. So we'll stamp this. Let's see what it looks like, see if we like the results and if I want it to be a little bit darker, I can. Now it looks like I didn't get stamped all the way in the middle. Let me press a little bit harder. And we start to see those flowers. Now it isn't all filled in yet because we haven't added the green to the leaves. Just for fun, let's do a little bit of color variation. And I'm gonna come in in the centers and apply that ink a lot heavier. And then as I move out on the flowers, just kind of blend it together, lighten up on how hard I'm tapping on the stamp. And it should fade. Okay, so there you can see that effect. Now let's add some mossy meadow to the leaves. And with this, of course, you, if your colors overlap onto the areas you don't want them, it's really not a big deal. That's pretty normal. I'll get some green on the flowers probably, and I probably have some Calypso coral on the leaves. And what I find is that I just don't really notice too much after I get my projects done if some of those colors do blend a little bit. So I'll add a little green down here to the base of the buds. Let's stamp once and see how it looks. And then again, we can stamp another time if we want to. And I do like that. I think I want to get that mossy meadow a little bit darker in a few spots. So let's do it one more time. Now I didn't clean off my stamp before I started with the mossy meadow depending on what colors you're using, you may want to be sure that you clean that stamp up first. Like if I was using the Mossy Meadow first and my Calypso Coral second, I wouldn't really want my Mossy Meadow to soak into my sponge dauber because once it's in the sponge dauber, it might soak into the ink pad the next time I ink it up. So just something to think about since I didn't show you that. And we got it 
we, we got a little bit off. I was supposed to use my magnet right, uh, but I kind of like, I actually kind of like that blurred effect. Now, here's what we're going to do because we're not done. I've showed this before, but we're gonna show, do, add to this in a way that I haven't shown for quite a while. So I'm going to clean my snap off. It is very important this time that I clean that snap off because we're going to ink it up with Versamark. I actually love that effect. Sometimes when things don't go perfectly in your craft area, try to look at it with fresh eyes and think, is that actually better than I wanted it to turn out? I think that looks really cool. Okay, so I'll get my verse mark and we're going to stamp over this again. So this is going to give us a way to emboss over the top. Now, if you're thinking like, oh, well then you won't be able to see the color. We will because we're going to emboss with clear embossing powder. So what it is going to look like is that we embossed parts of it with Calypso Coral and parts of it with Mossy Meadow, even though we don't have either one of those colors of embossing powder in our collections. So here's my clear embossing powder. We'll go ahead and move this out of the way. Something I forgot to show this time was to use that embossing buddy. I'll mention that the embossing buddy is part of a kit of embossing supplies called the Embossing Editions Toolkit, I think. And I'll show you one of those tools right now because I love it. I love to use it when I heat set. heat set my projects because I can hold it back here with these reverse tweezers. So I'm not actually having to squeeze on that. It's holding it itself and it will keep my fingers out of the way while I heat set this. So here you can see this finished piece that looks like we have embossed with the Calypso Coral and the Mossy Meadow. This is one of my favorite techniques for getting more use out of the products in your collection because just with your regular colors of ink, your Versamark and your clear embossing powder, you can make it look like you've embossed in any color that you have an ink pad for. So let me turn these samples into some finished cards. I'll be right back to show them to you. Okay, friends, I'm back. I just had a ton of fun finishing these cards and wanted to show you again, here's the bundle I was using to finish them, Fragrant Flowers. It's available January 5th. And that paper pack that I said you can get free with a $50 order in January and February, it's called Favored Flowers. So that's all I've used here, plus some cardstock and some inks. So let's look at this one first. I kept this one really simple, which I think totally works. It's got that beautiful multicolored embossing in the background and that lovely watercolor greeting in the front. I thought that was really nice just to put that on some black cardstock, add a little strip of designer paper down here and call it done. Let's look at this one. So I took that background we had created. I used the die cut to cut this flower out and I attached the background to the cardstock, put this greeting on, put this piece back on top with some dimensionals and added the little, this is actually a die cut or a die included in the set and stamped the little word friend on there. This one I thought turned out very elegant. So I die cut this flower out of that piece, as you can see, and then I used that texture die to run it through a few times and I'll show it to you here. This die doesn't cut anything, it creates texture. So I ran it through once here, once here, once here, added that texture, used my blending brushes to add a little bit of color so that it's not just the vanilla. And then I attached the background and I added this piece on top with dimensionals, but I bumped it down a little bit. I thought it added a little bit of interest seeing that border along the edge and stamped a very simple greeting. I thought this would be a really beautiful wedding card. And last but not least, this one, I die cut this from the background that it was attached to just put some of this pretty designer paper in the background and some vellum. This is 
kind of busy looking. The background is busy. If I want to combine things like that, my go-to way to solve that problem is just to add some vellum. And that makes this clearly stand out from that busy background. I uh, added the greening. This die that I cut this piece out with is going to be one I'm sure I'm going to use a ton for greetings on products, projects. Uh, and I really like these big, bold greetings as well. So thanks so much for watching along. I hope you saw some techniques here you can try. If you have questions, please let me know. I'll have links to all the products in the video description below beginning January 5th. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.